All right, here we go. Hey everybody, my name is Frank. This is the Pothon Programming Video Log, and today we're doing part 10 of the Stay Down Devlog. I am gonna be doing a lot of refactoring, and the cool part about this video that you wanna stick around for is I'm gonna be resizing the display to fit inside of the browser window as large as it possibly can while maintaining aspect ratio. So what that means is no matter what the size of this browser window is, the game is going to scale up to fit as best it can without stretching or skewing any of the images inside of your display canvas. So that's what this video is mainly about, but we do have to do some refactoring to get there. So let's just go ahead and jump into it. The first thing I'm gonna do, I'm going to set stay down equal to an anonymous function that returns An object literal so we've got that and this should not break anything I should just be able to come in here do this paste this in and put return just like that and see cool everything still works I didn't break anything yet let's do <clears throat> uh, one of the things I need to do is make a like a, a tracker for the current state like the current game state for the game, so I'm going to say const state. That's going to be our current state. Hmm, I can't make it a constant though. I got to do because this is a variable. So var variable state. Where that white space? Can't believe I left that in there. All right. The next thing I need to do is make a function called change state. It's going to take a game state in. The reason I put that underscore at the end is to differentiate it from my local state variable. So I'm gonna be setting my local state to whatever that state happens to be. I'm gonna be setting this dot en engine dot set state to whatever state is. Cool. This might seem kind of pointless right now, but it'll make sense in a minute. Let's go ahead and get rid of this. And instead of doing that, I'm going to say this dot. Do I have? Oh, no. Set change state. This dot change state and the run game state. All right. So let's save and see if this thing still works. All right. It still works. I'm also going to take the initialize function and put it inside of. Uh, do I need to do that? I don't know if I do. I do. All right. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and put the initialize function inside of this object literal that I'm returning here. So initialize is a function. We're going to copy all of this stuff out. Get rid of this. So everything's in our nice, clean anonymous function that should do the trick save if it works we're good all right it works we're good everything looks good so change state is working the next thing I need to do is modify my game state a little bit so my game state class I'm gonna modify and then I'm gonna modify my actual individual game states so what I'm doing here is adding two methods the activate and the deactivate method and the reason for that is when I enter a game state, I'm going to activate some stuff. And when I exit a game state, I'm going to deactivate some stuff. So in the case of the run game state, activation is going to look like adding the listener for resizing the screen. So we can do that fancy stretching of the display canvas. And also we're going to be appending this P element to the document body. And we're going to do that inside of the run game state um, instead of at the, you know, at the top level we don't really need to be doing the resizing for one game state at the top level. The game state should have that code inside of it. So let's go ahead and add activate and deactivate as methods. Activate and deactivate. Activate equals activate. Deactivate equals deactivate. And for alphabetical order, we will go ahead and move that just like that. Okay, cool. So this is gonna break everything. So when I refresh, everything's broken and that's because um, 
run and pause, my two game states do not reflect this new uh, game state constructor with how they're doing their thing. So let's go ahead and reorder render and update and also add activate and deactivate. Cool. We're gonna have to define those methods, activate and deactivate on run and pause, but I'll go ahead and replace the constructor first. Come up here, activate and function deactivate and I'll go ahead and put render above update just so we can keep things more organized because as long as I'm in refactoring mode I, I might as well do some moving around of things okay so now we've got the pause game state set up even though activate and deactivate don't do anything yet now I'm inside of the run game state I'm coming up to the top here I'm gonna paste activate deactivate can go over here let's see what we get all right everything's working again um, so now the the cool part about this is inside of my change state method here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say state whatever the current state is we need to deactivate it because we are no longer gonna be in that state. So let's say when I call change state, I'm currently in the run game state, and I'm gonna move over to the pause game state, I'm changing to the pause game state. I need to turn everything off that I can that has to do with the run game state, and I need to turn on everything that has to do with the pause game state. So deactivate the current state, change the state, state dot activate. And there we go. So deactivating the old state, changing the state, activating the new state, setting the new state inside of the engine. So we're calling update and render on the engine and, oh wait, calling update and render on the new state in the engine. There we go. Save that, refresh. We got a problem because deactivate is undefined. I did that on purpose so I could just show you a problem here. Uh, when we first initialize things, there is not going to be a current state because we haven't actually been running the game at all. So there is no current state yet. So I'm just going to say if state even exists, deactivate. Ooh, let's see. Can I read deactivate of undefined? Oh, my bad. What am I thinking? There we go. I was using the parameter instead of the uh, the current state. Okay, cool. So now everything's working again. We have a nice change state function. We have a private member um, or a private property to the stay down thing that we got going on here. It's private. None of the other objects can touch it. So that's pretty nice because you don't want something else to change your state without calling change state. All right, so now we need to go and move some stuff into the run game state. So one of the things I'm gonna move in is output. We don't need output in the main object. We don't need output there because output only pertains to the run game state. So I'm gonna go ahead and move that into this. I'm gonna say const output equals document dot create a p element save that see what else we can pull out of here inside of initialize we're not going to be appending output because it doesn't really even exist we don't need to deconstruct it let's go back into run this is where things start to get activated so when we call activate for the run game state, we're going to say document.body.penchild output. Save, let's see what we get, probably an error. Output has already been declared. Where has output been declared? Oh, defining it up here as well, cool. So save that, refresh, unexpected token const. 
where is that unexpected token const? I have a comma here because I'm copying out of an object literal. Output is not defined at object.initialize. So let's go back to staydown.js inside of the initialize function. We've got output.innerText equals hello. So save, go over to our run game state right underneath where we define output. I'll just go ahead and put that. So we initialize it to hello. We don't want to do this inside of activate because every time we reactivate the run game state, we don't want to reset our, um, our text. We just want it to be whatever the score was when we left. All right, cool. So what's going on here? Oh, our resize function. Okay, so now we need to move the resize function out of our, I don't, I don't need this open anymore. I'm not doing anything else with it. So I'll go ahead and close the game state file. The resize function no longer needs to be in our main object. I'm gonna go ahead and move it into, let's see, move it into the game run state. Just making sure everything is good. Looks good. Get rid of resize because we don't need to define that. I think we're good. Save. Let's go back to run. Inside of run, we're going to have resize. Let's go down to resize is a function. So let's say function resize takes an event. I'm going to move the update function below the render function to keep things alphabetically organized. Hopefully I'm not breaking anything. Save, refresh. <clears throat> okay, so now we don't have any functionality because resize isn't actually being called. So let's go into activate again and say, all right, so we're appending that. We're gonna also say window.add event listener, resize. We're gonna pass in the resize function. Cool, save. Let's see what we get. When I resize, what happens? Nothing happens. Can I read property style of undefined? So let's go to our resize method. We're setting output we don't need to because now it's a local constant. Rectangle, we don't need to get that from display because display is a local constant. Output.style.top is rectangle.top. That should be good. So now when we resize, all right, cool. So now our resize function is actually working inside of the run game state, which is awesome. Let me just see if I can pause this. Nothing breaks. And when I hit P again, it switches back. Before I forget about this and run into this in like two videos from now, <clears throat> let me actually use change state inside of here. We'll do change state. This might cause some problems, but we'll see. We're not gonna use engine.set state anymore. We're gonna use, oh, oh my bad. I keep doing set state. Change state to states.run. This is probably gonna break. Ah, crap, all right. Cannot read property set state of undefined. The reason we can't read the set state property of undefined is because, and I'm not really sure how to get around this yet, <coughs> but Inside of stay down JS, we have, we're referring to engine with this. So here in this context of this object literal, this is referring to this object and stay down is equal to this object. So in here in initialize, we're saying this dot change state run. So it's working because this is the stay down object. So that works. But for some reason, when I come into here, <clears throat> Actually, let's just do a 
alert this. I just want to show you that this is no longer what I think it is. So the first time change state gets called is right here. It's changing to the run state. It's returning an object. That object is the stay down object. All right, and when I press P, pauses. When I press P again, it calls change state and I'm getting object window for some reason. So <clears throat> I'm gonna have to look into why that is. I'm not gonna do it right now because got enough to do in this video and I don't feel like figuring that out while I'm recording because you're probably just gonna see me kind of staring at the screen for a long time so instead of doing this I'm just gonna say stay down dot change state state dot run see if this works P nice cool all right so that works Unfortunately, my, my fancy destructuring has a, a flaw with it. I'm sure I can find a way around that, um, but whatever. For now, this is gonna be the way it is. And also, I don't need to return because there's nothing else here to return in front of. All right, so now we have fixed changing from pause to run. Let's go into run. We need to go into update. engine.setState, we're going to do change state. Do I have access to pause states? That's why I don't un or delete the code. You should always just uncomment it, uncomment it, this, uncomment it. This way you can see what you need to retype. If there's anything that you're keeping from that previous line. Okay. so can pause, I can unpause. My chain state function is working even though I have to dot walk to it, which is a little disappointing, but whatever. Cool, so now let's go ahead and get this thing scaling up to fit my screen no matter what. Oh, wait, before I do though, uh, I am creating an issue. So every time I call activate, so whenever I pause and unpause, I'm adding another event listener, so that's really important. We have to use deactivate to get rid of that. So let's copy this stuff. Everything we activate, we have to remember to, to uh, deactivate. Otherwise, it's going to cause memory problems for us. So document.body.remove child output and then window.remove event listener resize. Let's see what we get. We should be removing the p tag. Yeah, cool. So that's pretty neat. So I don't have anything in the pause game state that redraws the uh, display canvas. So it's still displaying the display canvas, but I could make it display whatever I want to in the pause game state. So that's working pretty good. Let's go ahead and I might need to regroup where I'm at here. Resize, the resize function. We want to, oh, that's what I was gonna do. This up here, that's annoying. Let's go ahead and actually call the resize function when we are activating. So when we activate, let's do resize and see what we get. Okay, cool. So now when we activate, it pulled that uh, P tag down here because the resize function repositions that P tag, which is pretty handy. So now we're starting out with everything in the right position everything's working good the refactoring part is over for the most part i'm pretty sure so let's actually get to what people are probably here for because i'm going to title this video something like how to resize your display canvas um all right so inside of the resize method <clears throat> we are going to do some stuff oh how is this going to work let's do let's make a couple constants here we're gonna say constant window width is gonna be equal to document dot document element dot client width window height equals document dot document element dot client height. So this is how we get the width and height of the inside of our browser window. 
it's not the entire window it's just like the inner dimensions everything visible that you can see so all your HTML content is going to be visible in that area so that's the client width and client height of that area so next up we need to get the width and height of our display which is easy enough to do uh, so let's do display dot canvas dot width I don't think I really need to make local variables for this but for the the sake of just writing this neatly for now I will and I might go back and do this over a little bit to make it a little more less verbose display dot canvas dot height <clears throat> next up uh, so basically what I'm doing here is I'm getting the two dimensions of our our rectangles that we're working with we have the rectangle of the screen here and we have the rectangle of our display canvas what we want to do is figure out which dimension we need to scale our display canvas on to best fit the window rectangle so we're gonna do const width ratio is equal to window width divided by display width and then okay so we have our two ratios so basically we're just dividing whatever the width of the window is by whatever the width of the display canvas is and if that ratio is less than or greater than the height ratio we're going to be able to determine which axis or which dimension we need to scale on and that's going to determine basically how we scale our display canvas up so now i'm going to say const ratio actually let's call this scale scale is going to be equal to <clears throat> if width ratio is less than height ratio we're going to set scale to width ratio and if not height ratio let's see if i have any errors so far oh didn't mean to click nothing so far so we're good so far this is where we do some CSS adjustments. So I'm going to say display dot canvas dot style dot width equals. I'm going to have to add that in. That picks for pixels. Okay, so we got height and width. We're going to do display height times scale. Math.floor that because we don't want any decimals. Let's see what we get. I might have to move some stuff around. All right, so. <laughs> Maybe I got it right on the first try. Um, as you can see, I am scaling just the CSS of the display canvas, which is pretty cool. So what's happening here is my display canvas itself is the correct dimensions, um, and then the CSS is scaling it up in like the do the the DOM. So basically. The element itself is getting scaled up, but my canvas itself still has the same width and height. So if I were to come down here and say, I don't want to alert, but console.log um, display.canvas.height, the style anyway, plus Display dot canvas dot height. 
and refresh, I've got, it's scaling it up to 500 pixels tall, but really it's only 480 pixels. So that's pretty handy. Another cool thing about this is you can draw to this one time and you can use CSS to scale it up and down without having to redraw anything because it's not actually affecting your array buffer, the actual image on your canvas, nothing there is being affected. It's just changing what is being displayed on the screen. So that's pretty handy. Uh, so that's why I'm using the CSS to do this and not using like draw image to draw one canvas to another canvas that's bigger and using draw image to scale it up. I used to do that, so you might see some of my older videos that do that, use that approach, but I think this is probably just better all around. So we're just gonna go ahead and stick with this. All of these variables, this, the constants here, this kind of looks ugly to me. I'm not really liking that, the way that looks too much. It's taking up a lot of space. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just take this down a notch. So instead of window width, we're gonna just do, at some point I might actually want to keep track of the window width outside of the resize function. So that might be good to just keep track of. So get that, save, see what we get. Everything's still working. Does it have like a little jitter initially? No, it's like right there. It's pretty good. All right, so got rid of that. And then instead of display width, I'm pretty sure I'm just gonna do display.canvas.width because that's just kind of dumb. Let's go in here, paste that, paste this here, call it height. Got our scale, which is basically a compound if statement. Basically all this is saying is if the width ratio is less than the height ratio, set scale to the width ratio, whatever that is. And if not, then set scale equal to the height ratio. And then we're just multiplying essentially whatever our, oh, gotta come in here, fix this too. We're just gonna multiply the display dimensions, like the actual canvas dimensions by that scale and use whatever that is as our CSS values like for width and height. Let's see if I got this. I think so. Let's see if we can, let's go full screen and see what we get. Cool. So I am going to try to do actual full screen. So like F11 type full screen where you don't see any of the, um, you don't see the URL bar, the tabs or anything. We get like an actual full screen experience. But even then, this is gonna have to be employed. Uh, I'm gonna have to maintain the aspect ratio in my game even when I'm in full screen mode. So I'm still gonna have like probably some side margins. Uh, that's not gonna change, but this is looking pretty good so far. It is doing what it's supposed to. So anyway, I hope you guys learned something. I hope you liked the content. If you did, like the video, subscribe to the channel. I'm gonna have more content coming out. Um, Going all the way with this one, I'm gonna publish it to itch.io. This is gonna be like a fully playable, though very small and simple game. Uh, the next video, I might actually try to do the actual full screen. We'll see, we'll see. Probably announce what I'm gonna do in the beginning of the next video because I'm not really sure at this point, to be honest. But anyway, I'm gonna get out of here so you guys have a great day and I will see you in the next video.